Hello friends, how are you? I hope you all are doing well. As we all know, in this pandemic crisis, we have been locked down in the houses. I hope you all are staying at home, taking care of yourself. So in this lockdown period, we the Department of Mechanical Engineering have decided to provide you with a material available online for the study and as well as uh, create some resources for you so that you can learn well. So today in this lecture I am going to discuss the reciprocating air compressors. As per syllabus it is uh, the chapter number first according to this PTU syllabus for applied thermodynamics. So let's see the definition of reciprocating air compressors. Okay. So these compressors, what are these compressors? These are the work absorbing devices. It means that we have to give some work to these compressors and these are used to increase the pressure of fluid at the expense of work done. So we'll be supplying some work and we'll be giving some uh, let's say fluid or let's say in this case air we'll be giving the air to the compressor at low pressure and it will be uh, increasing the pressure on the expense of that work done. So there are numerous applications of compressors that are being uh, used nowadays. Some of these applications include uh, the driving of pneumatic tools and other air operated equipments uh, for spray painting, uh, supercharging and internal combustion engines, material handling, surface cleaning, it is used in refrigeration and air conditioning. We know a compressor is used in refrigeration and it is used in chemical industries as well. You, you people might have seen this uh, reciprocating compressors many times whenever you have visited some uh, service station to get air fill in the tires of your vehicle. So moving on further with the working this shows uh, the air inlet at pressure P1, V1, temperature T1 right and some work is given some heat gets rejected through the compressor some uh, prime mover you can say some like uh, an electric motor might be used or an IC engine might be used to give the power to this compressor and by utilizing that work by utilizing that uh, power from that prime mover it compresses the air and the compressed air is uh, taken out of the compressor. So the work required from increasing pressure of air is available from the prime mover during the compressor and generally an electric motor or IC engine or steam engine turbine etc. These are used as a prime mover. Now moving on to the classification of compressors. Uh, first classification has been done on the basis of the principle of operation. It can be positive displacement compressor or non-positive displacement compressor. Positive displacement compressor means that uh, like if uh, we uh, let's say in the case of reciprocating compressors the air gets into a contained volume right and that uh, the air entrapped in that particular region is then compressed. This type of working is called positive displacement in wind in which uh, the fluid gets into a specified volume and then uh, it is locked you can say and then it is compressed and then uh, further the compressed air or the compressed fluid can be further utilized uh, wherever required. So that is the positive displacement. In case of non-positive displacement the fluid is not contained in a specific uh, volume. Right? Let's say in the case of fans or blowers 
uh, these can be the examples of non positive displacement compressors whereas positive displacement compressors are where the uh, fluid is entrapped in some volume and then compressed so that is a positive displacement like uh, reciprocating compressors or uh, rotary rotary compressors so there are two categories of positive displacement compressors these are reciprocating type positive displacement compressor and rotary type positive displacement compressors further it can be classified uh, depending upon the number of stages like uh, the compression is being done only in uh, one stage or the compression is being done in multiple stages like uh, in case of multiple stages uh, let's say in case of two stage compressor once the air is compressed in first stage then that compressed air is further utilized in the second stage to compress it further so it increases the pressure also so as the number of stages are increasing you can see the pressure uh, delivery pressure can be increased so it can be single stage two stage three stage four stage compressors and accordingly you can see the pressure uh, delivery pressure increases for as the number of stages are increasing then depending upon the capacity of compressors it can be low capacity compressor it depends upon the uh, volume flow rate that how much uh, air it can deliver per unit time how much pressurized air or pressurized fluid it can deliver per unit time okay so it can be low capacity compressor having air delivery capacity less than uh, 0.15 meter cube per second or less than that then medium capacity compressors having delivery capacity between 0.15 and 5 meter cube per second and high capacity compressors uh, which deliver air more than 5 meter cube per second another category could be on the basis of highest pressure developed uh, the low pressure compressor having maximum pressure up to 1 bar medium pressure compressor 1 to 8 bar it is termed as medium pressure compressor if a, a compressor is uh, having a delivery pressure in the range of 8 to 10 bar it is termed as high pressure compressor and more than that it is termed as super high pressure compressors so this diagram shows the working of the reciprocating compressors and we can see that uh and this the construction includes a cylinder a piston a connecting rod a crank right this piston is allowed to move uh, up and down in the reciprocating motion and as the crank rotates uh this piston will move up and down as in the case of ic engines right okay so some power will be given at this prime over like some electric motor will be connected at this part and it will uh, rotate this crankshaft and it will move uh, it will force the piston to move up and down so as the piston will move up and down you can see there are two valves first there is an inlet valve and other is a exit valve these are generally controlled by the spring pressure and as the piston moves downward due to suction pressure this uh, inlet valve it will open up and the air will enter this cylinder chamber in the confined volume till the piston reaches a bottom dead center now further as uh, due, due to this motion as the piston moves upward uh, this exit valve will open and this inlet valve will get closed and the air will get compressed at just at at uh, the moment when the piston will be about to reach the top dead center the exit valve will open and the compressed air because here uh, the air will be get entrapped and the piston will be moving upward so this uh, the air entrapped in this part will be getting compressed so this exit valve will open just at the piston uh, reaches uh, the top dead center and the compressed air will uh, be delivered out of Uh, the stress reducing compressor along with this there may be some cooling jackets provided because the piston will be moving up and down so there will be a lot of friction between the piston and the cylinder so to uh, regularly cool it and 
provide sufficient amount of cooling so number of cooling jackets can be uh, provided to the uh, the body of the cylinder as in it is provided at the IC engines so in the next lecture we'll be discussing the thermodynamic analysis hope you'll be stay connected with me thank you